up everybody? Welcome back to another video. Ingve Blues Licks. You, you know it. You, you know what we're talking about. So uh, we are going to dive right into this one. I'm not going to hit you with a bunch of chit chat. Tabs are linked down below if you want to check that out. And uh, essentially there's just this, you know, it's from one of his instructional videos. Ingve does this insane blues solo. It's like super shreddy. And uh, when I was listening to it, I was like, you know, th it sounds like there's some really good phrases in there. And I basically played the video at half speed. <laughs> and I'm like, you know what? Some really good blues looks in here. So um, we're going to break them down. Uh, if you want to know the exact solo I'm talking about, I'll probably put a picture up of it uh, up here or I'll link it down below. But like I said, if you want to hear some of these licks in action, listen to his solo. And if you want to hear them at human speed, then half speed that video. So we're just going to dive on into it. So here's some Ingbe blues licks. The best of the Ingbe blues licks. Alrighty, so of course these are not going to be your, you know, B.B. King style blues licks, but I think that they can have this bluesy flavor to them, and it's kind of interesting to learn licks like this, you know, from a, a shred, a neoclassical shred guy, blues licks, you know, they're going to be a little bit different, so it could be something interesting to incorporate. I know I've already taken a lot away from these licks. So uh, the first one here is a really cool way of including that major third into your, you know, your little, basically, pentatonic box. And I should add... I am resolving a lot of these and ending the phrase. If you listen to the actual video of his, his licks tend to kind of like, you know, there's not a lot of breathing room between them. And I'm not saying that to be dumb, but you know, it, they're, they're very shreddy blues licks when he's playing them and there's not a lot of stops to them. You know, it's kind of like I'm taking little bits and pieces where he keeps going and I'm like, no, no, I'm just going to end the lick right there. So um, this one, you know, he continues on, but I just went like this. <laughs> Okay, so what's happening here is, it's, like I said, just think of it as your E minor pentatonic. All of these are E minor, and I'm essentially bending 15 on the B up a full stop, then 12 on the high E string. Okay, so now I'm going to go 16, pull off to uh, 12, then I'm going to go 17, pull off to 12, then 18, pull off to 12. So what's interesting here is he goes, that's your major third, back to root, there's your four, and then here's your flat five. Then he goes up to 19 and full step bends it. Then play it unbent. And I'm resolving it here. Like I said, he keeps going, but I resolve it back to 17. So. And that's the first leg. Like, it's simple, but it's really, really cool. This is actually one I've, I've stolen from him a very, very long time ago. First time I ever saw this instructional DVD. Um, he starts off a solo. You know, and I was always like, that's really cool. And I was, I've always really been into that major third uh, into your pentatonic. So as soon as I heard it, I knew what it was. And I was like, oh, yeah, that's cool. So there's your first lick. Like I said, these aren't like dauntingly complicated licks, but they're, they're really tasty. So lick number two, like I said, now he is, you know, blazing through these. Like, make sure you go listen to his solo. If you want to hear like the licks and then you're like, how are they bluesy? Like I said, then you play them half speed. You'll hear the blues in them all of a sudden. So uh, essentially, he's like I said, he's going very fast. But if you kind of slow it down and, and groove it a little bit, uh, you come up with this cool little phrase here. And I, and I really dug this. Uh, to me, it reminds me of like a Jimmy Page uh, kind of idea. But Jimmy Page, SRV. So I'm going to go 19, 18, 17 on the high string. Now, I should add that I believe Ingve is picking all these licks. There's no pull-offs. I like to do a pull-off here. I go pick, pick, pull. Up to you. You know, like I said, Ingve is not pulling off, so I tabbed them all as picked. But, you know, feel free to add pull-offs wherever you want. It gives it a little bit more swing. Uh, then you're going to go to 20 on the B. Okay. And then you go to 17 twice on the high string. And here's this little, uh, you know, traditional blues phrase. 20 on the B, 19 on the G, and then 17 on the B. Nice little blues like right there. I believe he plays it. You know, like I said, it, it's like very shreddy. <laughs> but like I said, when you slow it down, you add a little bit of that like bounce too. You know, boom, they're all flowing together. 
So look number three, and I'm looking at the tabs here, and it looks like my tabs are kind of messed up, so I'll try to label them better, but um, it's not organized as normal. I'm not sure what happened. Maybe this is just on my phone that it looks like this. But uh, anyways, so look number three is this one. Uh, we're going to go like this. Now again, he plays it very straight, you know, like that, and, and you know, fast. But you can kind of add some pull-off stuff, like I said, and a little bit of that bounce to it again. You know, and all of a sudden, I'm like, oh, there's that bluesiness to it there. And, and it's a really cool note selection because the way he's kind of barring his finger. So slow would look like this. This is kind of a little bit of a more difficult lick. So you're going to go, uh, it's all box one, 15 to 12 on the B. Now here you're going to add your blues note, you're going to go 15, 14, 12 on the G. Okay. Now here's where he starts rolling his finger like I was talking about. I, I love this stuff. This is very, um, to me like Angus did a lot of this stuff. Okay, you go to 14 on the D and you roll down to 14 on the G. Back to 14 on the D. I'm oh, sorry, it was 14 on the G. 14 D, 14 G, 14 D. So then you're gonna go 12 on the G. So now here you're gonna go to the D string. It's gonna go 14 and 12, and then you're gonna go 14 on the A. Back to 12 on the D. Okay, so even if you like broke these licks down into very small sections, they're really cool blues licks. Even the that right there. Boom, bam, down. Now here he just walks down again blues. So 14, 13, 12 on the B. Not on the B, on the A. Jeez. And uh, he resolves it to 14 on the D. So Look number four, I really, really dug because he's kind of mixing in that major minor vibe to it um, again. So he's starting back here. Uh, I'm doing it as basically, you know, box one of your E uh, major pentatonic. And he goes like this, and it was a really interesting jump that I hadn't really done before. So again, you know, it, sometimes it's all about these little pieces that you take from someone else's lick. Uh, and basically, we're going to go 9 to 11 on the D, 9 on the G. So it, it's all been standard and normal so far. And there's where I thought it really got cool. He goes to 12 on the B and bends it up a full step. Which, you know, is basically bending up to your major 6. So... Now he goes... And then very traditionally bluesy. Uh, I think, you know, a, a blues player might bend. He, he goes right for the note. He goes uh, 12, 11, 9 on the G. And then you go to, what was this, 11 on the D. And then 9 on the G. Resolving it back to that E note. Uh, a more traditional bluesy player might end up going... Probably something like that. So, But, you know, he's going like that. Either one works. It's up to you. Um, I... Personally, prefer the bend. And there you have it. All right, so the final look here was a rather tricky one. And again, he's rolling his finger in some really cool ways. And that's why I like this one, because it instantly tripped my hands up. And I was like, oh, all right. So uh, basically, slow would be like this. It's so funny just to hear the stuff slow down because it's so bluesy <laughs> then like you, you know when it's sped up it's just it's shreddy but um just kind of goes to show you it's all about the notes in between sometimes so anyway so he starts up with a full step bend here on 15. now here's the first little rolling thing that i like it goes 12 on the high e string to 12 on the b very you know very uh, srv to me now we slide it to 17 on the b twice 
So, and here's a really uh, cool way of walking down the pentatonic scale. He basically does it backwards. He goes 12, 15, 12 on the high E string, 12, 15, 12 on the B. Okay, so you have. Now he goes back to 12 on the high E string, then 15, 12 on the B, 15, 12 on the G. Okay, so there's your flat five, that blue note in there. So. Now you're gonna go 14 on the D, 14, 12 on the G, and then 14 on the D again. Okay, so you have. Now you notice how you have to roll that finger, and I'll wipe my hand real slowly. I go. See that first roll there? Now to go back to the high string, I have to roll again. Like I said, now he's playing it um, a little bit more straight, and a blues player is going to have a little bit more swing to it, but um, and, and probably add a little bit more of those little, you know, micro bends inside of it. So, oh. but it's so cool to take a lot of this stuff away. All right, homies, that's going to be it. I hope you enjoyed those. Like I said, you know, it's always really interesting to look at a player who, you know, obviously Yngwie is known for his shred, but then you look at his blue stuff, I'm like, there's some really interesting stuff happening there. So um, other than that, we're going to bounce on out of here, grab the tabs down below, and, um, you know, just let me know what else you want to see. So I'll see you guys later. I'm going to jam here at the end for you, and I'll see you next time.